scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Affect my life, breathe on me. Lord, I look to you for life. Affect my life, breathe on me. I look to you for life. Affect my life, breathe on me. Lord, I look to you for life. Affect my life, breathe on me. I look to you for life. Affect my life. Breathe on me. Change my life. Breathe on me. Lift my life. Breathe on me. Lord, I look to you for life. Change my life. Breathe on me. Heal my life. Breathe on me. Restore my life, breathe on me. I look to you for life. Lift my life, breathe on me. Bless my life, breathe on me. Change my life, breathe on me. Shalabarande salakata brahaska de in the lekete bransa sasiata kata brada gade balada katush. Pray, it's part of the meeting. Alabara kata brada gade gade bakata. Shalabara katush. Change my life. Change my life. Change my life. Let this not be another meeting. Change my life, oh God. 
change my life change my life change my life pray for your life not your finances not your ministry not your business focus on your life change my life change my life tonight is about me it's about my life leave your challenges if you are not there your challenges will not be there pray for yourself this is about my life Change my life. Change my life. Shalabarakata paratus. Hallelujah. Listen. Listen to me, please. Please listen. Many times we focus on the things we want changed not knowing that the troubles came because you were there no dead man has trouble no dead man needs finances no dead man needs breakthrough no dead man needs speed delay comes because you are there speed is needed because you are there everything is required because you are there we focus on everything we want change and forget about ourselves one of the primary assignments of prayer, listen, is not to petition God to meet needs. It's not even an instrument of warfare to ward off the power of darkness. It's not just a spiritual system of legislature. One of the major assignments of prayer, and this is where many believers continue to miss it, prayer was originally designed to change you let me show you a scripture Luke chapter, keep standing Luke chapter 9 thank you Holy Spirit Luke chapter 9 Luke chapter 9 please be sensitive tonight Luke chapter 9 from verse 29 everybody read one two read and as he prayed the fashion of his countenance was altered and his raiment was white glistening. He prayed and nothing around him changed. It was him that changed. When he prayed, his countenance changed, his raiment changed. You can change yourself in prayer. Did you hear what I said? You can change like, a, how many of you have seen a snake molting? Is a system by which they grow, they expand, they come out of their former self into a new self. So when you see that snake, the, 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 the former self, the, the shell of it that is left, is the former one. You can pray yourself into a newer version of yourself. You can pray yourself into a wiser version of yourself. You can, let me tell you this, prayer is not the only key. But whenever prayer is not the key, it becomes the hand that holds the key. If prayer is not the key, then it is the hand that holds the key to the door. Everything plus prayer increases you. Knowledge plus prayer increases you. Grace plus prayer increases you. Are we together? And as he prayed, he didn't say his situation changed. No. He didn't say as he prayed. Those, there were times that he prayed and people from a distance were blessed. But this time around, as he prayed, he was the one changing. We're going to still pray a few minutes. This prayer is not for my father. This prayer is not for my bank account. This prayer is not, oh God, take darkness out of my life. This prayer is change me. This is not the best fashion of me. This is not the best. It's, it's, like an, it's like an incubation room. Bring something out of my prayer life, oh God.
that is not what went in is someone pray lift your voice pray you are praying to be changed you are not praying for things to change you are praying to be changed Fix your eyes on Jesus and pray. They looked on to him and their faces were lightened. do not say i'm tired do not say i'm weak that's a lie of the devil do not say i can't pray you pray for your destiny by praying for yourself you change things by changing Take this weak version of myself to a strong version, oh God. Take this weak version of myself, this weak version of a man of God, this fit version of a woman, this weak version of an entrepreneur, this weak version of a career person. Let it be replaced by a strong one. There is power in prayer. Pray yourself to strength. Pray your way to authority. Pray your way to power in the spirit. Pray your way to strength. But the people that do know their God, they shall be strong. Pray your way to faith. That thy profiting may appear unto all that thy property may appear unto all that thy property may appear unto all your profiting will never 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 appear unto all by default you must pray your way to results pray your way to real power pray your way to strength pray your way to real anointing Pray out weakness from your life. Pray out fear from your life.
pray your way out of lukewarmness pray your way out of doubt and unbelief listen listen to me listen to me greatness is what you attract to your life by reason of what you are becoming more than by reason of what you have your results 
are a reflection of the transitions happening in your life or otherwise it is cheaper to change yourself than to change things because when you change things must change everything in your life is a statement to your destiny this is where you are in the spirit this is where you are in knowledge this is where you are in destiny instead of shifting things one by one shift yourself and everything will rise to follow you you truly change things by changing you don't change things it's harder to change things one by one everything you draw to your life is a reflection of what version of you when you change your results change when you change even the operation of the spirit over your life changes he does not relate with everybody the same way at every dimension no hallelujah it's important we pray the biblical way to deal with weakness is to pray you pray out a weak version of yourself if you fail in the day of battle he say your strength is small hallelujah praise the lord please be seated god bless you be seated and be sensitive please play the strings for me mighty god give you praise good evening everybody it's my goal and my prayer and my desire that every service becomes an experience for someone's life an experience for someone's destiny we've been doing this for many years but we will never take for granted the opportunity that god gives for our growth and our transition every service is prepared intentionally not only to bless not just to honor the continuity of a ministry's program but it's an opportunity for the holy spirit to come once again and to change our lives and among the things we must rebuke is familiarity you must rebuke familiarity i know how god works i know how god moves i know somebody is about to shout i know somebody will roll as usual this is what you expect in koinonia that familiarity will turn you from a partaker to a spectator you can be in a place be a witness a spectator and not a partaker it takes more than just looking around to be a partaker it takes a heart connection an awareness that one moment in god's presence effectively maximized can turn a man's life around people say one word from god can change a man no one word from god does not change a man one word from god received understood and engaged is what will change a man one word from god to change a man is deception the devil has never been afraid of the word of god when the sower sowed it was satan himself that came and carried the seed one word received with meekness the bible says the engrafted word praise the lord i came tonight with a very serious burden um and many times when the lord wants you to teach teachings that are very very seasonal and very called for especially as the times demand he will bring them not as sermons he will bring them as burdens it will be a strong burden upon your spirit that will refuse to leave praise the lord and um i've been focusing a lot 
especially about what i just talked about the power of changing things by changing the power of growing to superior realms of results by being the one to grow i think that sometimes we pay so much attention on the things around us we desire changed that we forget that those things are there because of us that means that if i refuse to transit in life no matter what i try to move it will come down back to my level are we together now there are many things you would not need to pray for if you pray for yourself let me repeat there are many things you would not need to pray for if you pray on and for yourself that means if you become the project of the growth there are many things you may not need to pray for again it's true in praying for yourself you will find out that you are praying for many other things your prayer life and indeed your destiny will be hard if you focus on any other thing outside yourself pay attention to yourself the development your transition and then you will find out that in doing so you are automatically influencing every result you desire let me repeat what i said earlier on while we're praying that greatness and success is what you attract to yourself not what you pursue what you attract to yourself by reason of who you are becoming if i'm still the person yesterday today then i do not deserve to get any result different from that which i had yesterday the results you seek cannot come to this version of you they are to come but not this version of you the anointing that you seek cannot come upon this version of you the prosperity you seek cannot enter into the pocket of this version of you so many times the power of restraint is not always demonic it is god waiting for the version of you that matches that result please listen and learn and grow this is spiritual intelligence not every restraint is an attack from satan not every restraint is proof that there is something demonic many times it can be god waiting for the version of you that is fit it is not because god cannot take the members from hundred to ten thousand it is not because god cannot take your finances from 500 to 10 million it is not because god cannot take your grace from this level to that level but it cannot come on this version of you the bible says you cannot put new wine in an old wine skin they are all called wine skins the difference is old and new you are still called a human being but the difference is the old version and the new version you are still called a man of god but the man of god before and the new man of god ah jesus said why seekest ye the dead among the living there was a version of me that lied lifeless you saw that version on the ground but it's no longer in the grave a version of me has arisen in the glory of the father not the one that walked the earth now without blood a version of me that lives by another life i learned this in my life and as a person i stopped wasting my time to change things it is hard to change things do you know how many things in your life you have to change if you pursue them one by one think how hard it is to look for good friends think how hard it is to look for quality connections and relationships think how hard it is to look for information every level already has the systems and the provisions waiting the cheapest way listen it is harder for me to try to reach to something higher than me to bring it down to my level it is wiser to grow to that level where it no longer becomes difficult remember if you watch a child growing up like one of these are little ones they try to reach for something and you see the difficulty they can fall many times 
it is cheaper. Sometimes they can try and stand upon something that can throw them and then pick what they want. But an adult who has grown just comes and he can look from that height and without pressure pick. The things that are hard today are not hard. It is your level that defines them so. If you grow, you will find out that they are not so. The finances that looks like a monster of a realm. Lord, when will I go out of this? It's only the old version of you is looking at the destiny that only the new version of you can enter. So it looks hard. Spiritually, Lord, is it possible that I can step into this? How will I start seeing visions? What does it look like to see a vision? Will I be in myself? Will I fall down? Is it that I'm dying? Those are unnecessary questions. Just grow. When you grow and enter those realms by experience, you will have those answers. There are many things about your biological life you did not need to ask. It's a burden to ask every question. What happens to me when I'm a teenager? What happens when I'm 13? Give me a detailed information of what will happen when I'm 14 years. It's unnecessary. Just grow. As you grow many times, you will find out that you didn't even consciously pay attention to those transitions. Let me ask you a question. Do you know where your clothes of 10 years were? Do you know where they are now? Can you remember giving them out? No. Can you remember burning them up? No. Can you remember packing them to keep somewhere? No. They left for these ones to come. He said, mystery you don't understand. Remember where your first phone is? Remember you didn't throw it. Remember you didn't sell it. Remember you didn't sew it. But where is it? Many times we don't know the things around us are living things too. They are governed by laws. They live quietly and we do not know. May the Lord give us understanding. That the things that we call dead are not dead. They can hear and they can see. They are more obedient to the systems of God than us. Are we together? I never had to tell anybody, stop giving me this kind of honorarium. Stop tearing 2A and rolling 500 naira inside and chucking it in my pocket as a bribe. That would be stupid and arrogant. The key is to grow. When you grow, a law prohibits individuals from approaching you that way. Are we together? So many times when you look at the things around you and you don't like them, they were not designed to live. They were designed to be the reality of anybody in that realm. If you don't like them, move to the realm where there are realities that match your desire. Please listen to me. This will give us intelligence. There are many prayers we pray that are, it's just the mercy of God that answers them. They are not wise prayers. They are prayers that are a reflection of spiritual ignorance. Many times the prayer is not take this away from me. Many times the prayer is take me out of this realm. The realities are fixed. They are there. An heir, as long as he's a child, he says, differed not from a slave, though he be lord of all. He says, but he's under tutors and governors. That means that when you find out there are tutors and governors around, the issue is not to drive them away. The issue is to grow out of childhood and you may not need them again. Praise the Lord. Yes. Another analogy, and then I'll begin to teach on what I have tonight. There are many primary schools, I believe they still do it, where the junior students in that primary school wear short trousers. Is that correct? And then when they get to a particular level, they start to wear long trousers. Now imagine someone in, say, primary two, goes to the teacher and say, look, I'm tall. It's something that came genetically. And because of that, it may not look good on me to wear a short trouser. The rules will not change because of you. But when you change, you change the rules. 
you don't change the rules by changing the rules you change the rules by leaving the realm where those rules apply all rules don't apply the same at every level it is true are we together so we seek to transit by the spirit to realms where certain things no longer hold listen to me look up please look up you're writing but look up if you do not pay attention to what i'm saying this is what will happen to you everybody speaks from the reality that his transition has captured so many times when you hear people speak you will interpret their speakings from your realm and based on your realm it looks untrue with all humility if in 24 hours nobody favors me is proof something is wrong at this level you see that yes the level god has brought me makes it is either an attack or something about my life 24 hours cannot happen without someone favoring me this is the reality at this level are we together now yes once upon a time if i'm not favored in a year i'll have to be patient for one year to know whether it's an attack or not at the end of that year i say no this year it, it was not like that and then you pray and then you rise to a realm where it becomes a month you rise to a realm where it becomes a week if nobody calls my phone in 24 hours seeking for help something is wrong i will go for a retreat 24 hours i wake up every day without fail with text messages of people needing the grace of god upon my life once upon a time i think something happened to my phone and there was no network i got up in the morning and flipped my phone and it was empty i said this is something is wrong something has to be wrong in five hours my phone did not ring nobody sent a text something is wrong i off the phone and put it back and there the text i said this is it because that result did not look like my realm now listen please listen to what i'm teaching you there are levels where if you pray for one hour you must punish yourself hello this is not religion you truly must punish yourself because the demand on your life the daily servicing of your altar one hour is too small if you don't meet that target you must punish yourself by an extended prayer time someday why because before you finish thanking god for what he has done the time should have gone what god has done is to before you start listening and say lord let me name my blessings thank you because the other day they didn't kill my member somewhere thank you oh god because the wicked did not get a reason to laugh one hour is already covered there are people who don't have much to say thank you for thank you lord because i'm alive thank you because even though my father is alive lord here are my needs but there are things god has done to you in some realms it is wicked to use 10 minutes to say thank you now the time someone is interceding is your thanksgiving time you use that one hour to roll on the ground and say thank you sometimes you use 15 minutes to just keep quiet and let your tears say thank you before you start talking that's why i'm telling you praying for one hour in certain realms is not talking in tongues for one hour there are activities in some realms that is only intercession and warfare what and what intercession and warfare because of the seriousness of where you are but there are realms that god has given you some level of victory intercession will be after a prolonged period of cry and thanksgiving so two people go to pray come show two people go to pray they represent different realms one person enters and says, father i give you thanks you are the lion of the tribe of judah this is the day or the night whatever time of the day that the lord has made i rejoice i give thanks Shut up, and straight you go into lord these are my petitions help me oh this is plenty the list is increasing lord help me at the point you start praying you start lamenting you are right at that realm you will find out that the person you went to pray with you will think he cannot pray this is what you'll be doing 
Thank you, Jesus. Father, I glorify you. He's praying, oh. You are merciful. You are merciful. You are merciful. And a song is playing. Lord, you are merciful. And you are there praying and getting angry. I say, hey, this guy doesn't know what he's doing. You are not at the same realm. Listen carefully. Listen carefully. Listen. That person is taking out time. Later on, you are exhausted. You are thirsty. You are tired. You don't even know you have been praying amiss all around. He knows you are praying amiss. He's not correcting you because there is a provision of God's mercy that whoever is at that realm, God should ignore his mistakes and answer him. So you find out that you are praying a lot of nonsense at that realm and you receive supernatural answers. They are not a proof that you are correct. The person standing here already knows. You didn't enter his gates with thanksgiving. You didn't even get to his court. You are shouting around the gate. But God came out and helped you. That is not how he helps men. He just came to help you. Now watch this. This is, if you understand, you will now get what I'm telling you. That your prayer life, imagine that two of you come. You, you truly, with, without, without a sense of pride, two of you cannot be prayer partners. It's not like you can pray together, but you can't be prayer partners. You can only be prayer partners corporately and to round up, maybe belong to the same group. Because this guy is already, he brings out his piece of paper and there's nothing to bring out. You tell him, all right, pray. And you lie down flat only to stand up after two hours. You are not sleeping, you know? It's part of the prayer time. And the guy says, God, bros, I'm tired. I'll finish. I need to go. I'll come back later. And he says, okay, God bless you. There are certain realms where you cannot pray with people. There are things God will do and tell you that requires you alone with him. So when people are there, he will relate with you in a way and manner that is general. And you have to remain behind because you know you and God have not talked yet. People are there and you are praying generally. Oh Lord, thank you for everything. Okay, may God bless you, sir. We are going to sleep and you tell them go. And then immediately you go. The atmosphere changes. The Holy Spirit now comes as one adorned for that realm. There are ways he cannot relate. The, the weirdness of his operation at that realm cannot be understood by people. Because sometimes as soon as he comes there, you will do things that don't make sense. You will walk alone and fall down and that's it. You are in a vision. And for the next 30 minutes you are there. Do you think that person will leave you alone? He will wake you and shift you till your spirit cannot return back to your body again. So he will allow them go. You don't covet a man's prayer dimension by saying, let that dimension come and meet me. No. You don't have enough testimonies to pray that kind of prayer. You've not gone through enough pain to know what a man will be doing for three hours. Everything in your life is paid for by everybody. You don't know what it means to be attacked. What commission have you been given? What assignment? What, what is the devil going to attack you for? It's just general attacks here and there just to bring down your spiritual life. Nothing serious. So you can stroll around for 10 minutes and go. But there are certain burdens that when, I, when they're on your head, the time it takes me to pray for one department alone in Koinonia will surprise you. There are, when you know, see, listen, the weight on your head determines how you walk. If you are carrying a cup on your head, you can even leave it and walk around. If you are carrying a head pan, you can walk around. If you are carrying a destiny, the walk is so slippery, God must lead you on how to walk. This is what people do not understand. So this thing people generally call prayer is many things at many realms. That's why you see me encourage people. I... As I began to grow in the things of God, I found out that I cannot pray comfortably in the daytime. My life at this level will not allow me to maximize prayer. The distraction that will come from my phone ringing, I don't off my phone. Whether I'm on pulpit or my phone is, if my phone is off, I'm either taking a flight or maybe something is done. 
you see that i charge my phone an average of twice every day i have to because of you do you know living is not general the concept of living is dimensional listen to me that means when you are tired of certain things certain experiences around you someone else is coming into that dimension so you are not going to say lord take away those things your job is to rise to the next dimension are we together now yes once upon a time i remember those days if there were 30 people and i was going to minister to them i would have to lay hands on everybody one by one it was very exhausting and i said god there has to be a better way once upon a time if god is talking to me and i see in the spirit that god wants to touch you i will have to walk to you to touch you for that word to come to pass that was it was not what god could do it was what my renewal and my alignment at that level could allow him do and i knew that if i continue that way what if i have 30 minutes to preach and God wants to touch 500 people. I follow them one by one. Touch somebody in overflow three. Come back, touch this. How do you touch the people online? And then I said, God, there has to be a way. And he said, of course there is a way. For I am a man under authority. And I say to one, go. And he goeth. That your words can become you. You don't have to move. Your presence can be poured into your words you can send it on errand backed up by the anointing of the spirit and it will produce the same effect and i said okay god what does it take let's go if you are interested now when you rise to that realm you will see it and then sometimes a new believer will sit down and be wondering wow how does this thing happen if the holy spirit shows me that he wants to touch someone in overflow three now you see all i need to do is not just to speak it or say it you see that you agree with god it looks simple until you are taught what really happens you come and collect the mic and talk i will tell you when god wants to touch somebody your job is to just say it and you will be very surprised to see as if god doesn't love you so most of this prayer lord why did you disgrace me I went to this meeting expecting the result of a realm. You went to the meeting with the expectation of a realm you have not entered. Because you saw somebody and you said, no, Abba, this must happen. Are we together? There are people who carry graces. As soon as they sit down and begin to talk, something about the realm and the dimension of God that they walk in will force you to pay attention they don't have to say keep quiet no there are realms where they say oh yeah keep quiet now praise god everybody listen but there are realms where there are other provisions some spiritual arsenals have been provided that compel men to hear you so you can see two men of god operating everybody's bringing his possibilities Are we together? Yes. To believe that everybody is just generically carrying eternal life, carrying the Holy Spirit. You are right, but you are wrong. People come with their realms and the possibilities that come with those realms. Listen to me. And that means that if and when you are tired of what you are seeing and you do not like it, the Bible says, who shall ascend to the hill of the Lord? There is a hill. There is a level where you can rise to. Elijah was sitting uphill and he was able to see those who were coming. And he called down fire on them. He was sitting at an altitude. Physically, but that can also be symbolic of an altitude in the spirit. Papa Iya Deboe can just come and stand on this pulpit and just say thank you and speak and say, let me bless you i declare that before the end of this week you will be favored 
now he's speaking from a realm you will say amen it may not sound charismatic it may not sound apostolic nobody falls nobody rises but the nature of the spiritual provision that follows his grace will insist that that word comes to pass not because you believe it for the sake of the position he represents to the body so you see him not say well do you have there are realms where you say have faith express i'm sensing unbelief you are stopping this thing from happening truly there are dimensions where god does a thing not just for his name's sake he does it to honor the covenant he has with the vessels it's true that's why you can find somebody will come under a ministry and way before he starts learning how to tight he will start receiving results of a tighter breakthrough open doors and when you meet him and say you are so successful teach me about success it will be the worst 30 minutes of your life he will vent ignorance from a to z and say why are you succeeding he said, well i don't know and truly he's right he doesn't know and if he makes a mistake to go out of that covering in one week everything will dry because that thing will come his results will come back to look like his true realm do you believe what i'm sharing with you yes the animals did not want to be saved they didn't know how to be saved but they came under the covering of noah's ark it was built with food inside to sustain them the animals would come out after the flood like heroes but where they left alone they would die there are dimensions in the spirit and there are realities that means that if i want you to move to another dimension of results then i must be able to guide you on the principles that will transit you from where you are to where you need to be there are destinies that no matter how you pray and fast at that level there are certain levels of the blessings of the lord that may never be made manifest your capacity at that level will not allow god bless you there is no need for that level of blessing at that level are we together there are things you must be taught that means every time come look up please that means every time the word of god is coming to you it's not only edifying you listen very carefully it's not only informing you it's transiting you that means a possibility exists that you came here koinonia at a realm and by the time we're sharing the grace you would think because you wore the same clothes you are the same person going out immediately you step out you will find out that the reality that followed you here is not the reality that went out with you many of you especially men of god come here and you just sit for one meeting and at the end of it sometimes you don't even get to see me and you are prayed for and that's it all you need to do is go back to your church or your fellowship and the first surprise is when you open your bible ah, ah, what is this again then you stand to pray and it will surprise you let me tell you another thing that will surprise you your worship team members that didn't follow you will start singing and you will think this is koinonia worship team you took something more than you back to your meeting are you seeing that remember you didn't call them to tell them look this is where i went to this is the grace i carried you went quietly but the nature of that grace is like a software it starts reprogramming everything around you to reflect the level you have now entered all of a sudden you find out that if you are someone who were not excellent for instance and you contacted that grace for excellence you come back with it you don't have to start teaching first you will find out that in a span of two months exceptionally excellent people will start coming to your platforms they were called there is a grace that calls them they don't hear you because you are not yet at the level where they hear there are ministries that no matter what branch you open even if they open the branch close to a mosque they must have excellent people it's not like they bring people from the headquarters the grace 
was designed to ransack the city and look for those who must make the anointing that is upon that level to work to come. There are cities where people hardly get land for church and for certain things. But there are ministries that enter with some graces. As soon as they enter, there must be vacancy. Suddenly somebody gets visa and is going abroad and he leaves his house. And they demolish that house and it becomes a church. The pressure that that grace puts on a territory until there are results. Please listen to what I'm telling you. That means there is a grace you can carry that when you stand somewhere, it becomes impossible for people to ignore you. It's not you. You have risen to a level. That grace will begin to compel. It will orchestrate a scenario that must bring you out. No matter where you hide, something must happen. To the point that if God, if it's a grace at that level, God has mandated that at that level, any time you go, you must be seen and his grace must be acknowledged. So you are humble. And because you are in that place, God, that anointing can make somebody who has no business coming there, who knows you, to come there so that he can announce you and then leave. The grace on your life. There are dimensions of favor that you can enter into. Huh? that even if it's on a saturday night you speak over people they must be blessed even if it's sunday during service it's true it's true there are graces please listen to me there are dimensions you get to in the spirit that when you make certain spiritual utterances and say God said, even if it's not God that said it, because of the realm you occupy, he will honor what you have said and rebuke you when you go back. Are we together? That means it is possible for a man of God, a prophet, to come and see, learn this, a prophet can come and see that Shehu is supposed to be blessed October. That's what the revelation gave and is accurate. But I can come with a dimension. Listen carefully. Until a higher dimension comes, the highest grace that spoke is what works. But when a higher grace comes, I can make that October become tomorrow. I'm not a prophet. I came with a realm of intimacy. And a covenant that I have with God. And I can look at him and say, my friend, um, something fell down and you gave me. Look at this. I bless you by tomorrow. And God will take what, it doesn't mean the prophet lied. It is the implication of the realm that was introduced. <laughs> Believers hear this and grow. So if you don't understand, you may go back and say, fake prophet. You prophesied nonsense. No. The prophet himself, even that office is in levels. A prophet in this realm is not greater than a Christian in this realm. The realm which is a reflection of his work with God must bow. Listen, the office that that man has, as powerful as it is, there is a realm of intimacy you can have with God that equals that office. You are not a prophet, but the level of dealing you have gotten with, your result is the same result a prophet will get. So when you stand side by side by, with a prophet, they will call two of you prophets. You are not a prophet. You have only transited to a realm where there is no difference between you and the result of a prophet or an apostle. These are deep mysteries in the kingdom that many people do not understand. Are you hearing what I'm saying? That's powerful. That means if you truly want to be a blessing, more than office, more than titles, seek to be transitioned to a deep 
dimension of work with the Holy Spirit where there are results you will command that it looks like you are getting results from every office. A point will come, your members will not even know who you are. They said, this guy is a prophet, but are you really a prophet? This guy is an evangelist, but you are prophesying more than a prophet. And you say you are an evangelist. You say, God told me I'm an evangelist. You started as an evangelist. Your intimacy took you to the realm where only prophets should get to and took you to a realm higher than that dimension. That means it is possible for a man of God you offend to curse you in anger. And truly it will happen. But a man of God will come who is not a prophet, not an apostle, not anything. But in a dimension of grace, he has been given the power. He will nullify that thing and say it is true. Based on this course, you should die tomorrow. But I hold your hands. God, look at him for my sake. Let it go. It's true. I'm looking for the best way I will help you understand this thing tonight. These are the dimensions that are at work in us. That certain things can happen to people because certain people are there. Are we together? Yes. All of these things you see are provisions that God put in place to ensure that the body continues to grow and that we continue to receive results. You can't believe that I've not even touched my message tonight. I just came with a hunger and a burden. Let's see what I can touch. I took the A part of what I want to share last week. Responding to the situation that we have that is widespread now. People getting frustrated as to whether the word of God produces results or not. Many of you have seen the rate of suicide and the rate of not armed robbery, not Boko Haram. These are people killing themselves now. A man leaves his family and then they are called that he died. Left a note, I'm tired of life and that's it. And young people also killing themselves. And those who are alive, it's almost as if they are dead already depression teenagers having depression young people having high blood pressure all kinds of health related issues there is an answer i attempted to answer that question last week was it or the week before last that the reason the first reason that we looked at was because of the nature and the kind of mentorship and teaching are we together? I stated that people have been taught that the value of their life is in the abundance of the physical things they get. And so by the time you find out that you are unable to get a car and a house and a child and a husband and a wife and certain things at certain levels, self-inflicted frustration begins to come. Listen carefully. And as a result, people become depressed. You hear people saying, as old as I am, I, I don't have a child, or I don't have a wife, or I don't have a husband, or I don't have my own house. Can you imagine at this age, I'm still renting? Can you imagine this and that? Can you imagine at this age, I have only three girls, no boy, you know, and all of these kinds of things. And I told us that it is because, first, the kinds of teachings, please listen carefully. The kinds of teachings that we have taught people. We have taught people that spirituality, and in many circles, sadly, that spirituality is only measured in the acquisition of physical things. Are we together? So, by the time I have, by the time I have certain things for a prolonged period of time, maybe a house, a car, and all of that, I am perceived to not be growing spiritually. Are we together? Yes. Why do you still have this car after 10 years? Why are you still living here after 20 years? So that pressure to do things, to prove that the word is working. When our 
our expectations continually become disappointed, then we are plunged into that state of depression. Are we together? But then tonight's teaching also is an attempt to bring balance to it, to help us understand it is important for us to get results. And I want to talk um, maybe just a few minutes. Our time is already spent. On the fact that I believe that many people are unable to rise to the realms. Please listen. The realms that will allow their lives to reflect the faithfulness of God. Among many things because we have not learned... Thank you. We have not learned that success is not something you pursue. Please say after me, you do not pursue success. You do not pursue greatness. There is nobody who tries to pursue success or pursue greatness, whether spiritually, financially, and otherwise, that will ever have it. It is not something you pursue. Please listen to me. It is something that you draw. It is attracted to your life on the strength of who you become. And listen to me. There are certain traits. Every blessed man, every anointed man, every influential man, everyone that has been trusted with grace and influence will tell you. Listen, there are a set of traits that individuals must possess you call it character you call it whatever it is there are belief systems say belief systems there are there are mindset conditionings that you must be able to have that will allow you to transit like i said earlier to the realms where these things effortlessly let me tell you this every time you struggle unnecessarily to get something stop immediately did you hear what i said every time you are struggling unnecessarily to get a thing stop immediately it may be proof that you have not acquired the spiritual the psychological and the spiritual maybe sometimes the intellectual stamina to bring that thing this is rainy season no farmer would go to the farm and have to labor so much to till the ground why because part of the provision of the rainy season is a system that softens the soil are we together now but if you try to till the ground by november december especially at this part of the country you're going to have a hard time so there are certain things we are trying to get is proof that although you are trying to reach out and it's running away from you is telling you something by running that you are not yet qualified for me so instead of running unnecessarily cut away and stay back and build the belief systems build the track record in the spirit that makes for that thing and i tell you whatever it is that left you will come to you and stick to you and refuse to go it is true for finances it is true for ministry it is true for leadership it is true for the anointing it is true for revelation it is true for anything i want to walk you through a few belief systems tonight maybe just two three and we'll pray since our time is gone that i believe is pivotal to our entering this new seasons that the lord has spoken to us about there are many of us who can sense in the spirit that i am at the edge i am i've exhausted my current level are we together now that financially spiritually and otherwise but let me limit it to uh the things that pertain unto life the things that matter to our life our upkeep our welfare and so on and so forth because that is what is causing the depression i don't think anyone will go and kill himself just because he doesn't know god he would rather fast he would rather pray he would rather buy books but when you are unable to pay the fees of your children, when you are unable to do well, when you are unable to take care of your parents and do all of that, the accumulated frustration can push you to a point. Do you know that in all fairness, I think in the last one or two weeks, I've gotten at least one text every day. People just calling and saying, Apostle, please, you have to talk to me. 
Otherwise, I've been sensing, I've been hearing a voice say I should kill myself. I'm good for nothing. Repeatedly from different regions. And then I knew that this, this is terrible. Hearing voices, getting frustrated, feeling my life cannot, you know, my life would not make sense. The, the latest of the suicide issues I got to hear was a man, a father who had a quarrel with his wife. This is a true story. Some of you may have heard it. A man who picked a quarrel with his wife and she took out time and blasted him and told him how irresponsible, how shameless, how disappointed she was in him, how sad she felt that she got married to him and told him, is it that his children were also disappointed? And the last they said was that the man went out. He just left and that was it. They thought he was kidnapped. They thought he was killed. They didn't see him for a few days and they thought he was just, you know, men and their anger until police traced down and they found out that the man had died and they traced that the death was suicide now if you trace i'm not talking against church but if you trace that man will have to be associated with a group a church a fellowship or some kind of spiritual platform that means it is irresponsible for any man of god any spiritual leader to not at least respond to these things listen sociologically speaking men of god are also mind control systems men of god are also agents of transformation and much more than helping people to build their spiritual convictions we must pay attention to make sure that when there is an there is a psychological epidemic within a territory it is wise for every responsible man of God who has a sizable influence over people to contribute in making the people stay in a position that will not allow Satan to bring all of those kinds of predicaments. Are we together? Say, I need results in my life. It is true that results are not the basis of our confidence. It is true that results are not the object, not the motivation behind our pursuit of God and our walk in the faith. However, as I have said, I will continue to say again that results, among other things, are a system of consolation. Results are proof that you are adhering to spiritual laws. Results are also proof in many regards that God is with you. Not all the time, but many times. Rabbi, we know that thou art a man sent from God. How do we know? For no man can do these things. So when God is with you, there are some things, there are some evidences, attestations of his presence that must be there. And the Lord put it in my heart and I know by experience and by the privilege of mentorship from exceptionally successful people in the faith life, financially and so on and so forth that there might be a few things we may be missing as believers or other things that we need to inculcate that can transit us to the levels that we seek to have the results that will make us at ease to know and believe that God is faithful are we together so I want to share with us a few things that just take note of it we'll just take three for the sake of time and then we'll pray tonight Hallelujah. The first belief system that I want us to learn tonight that helps us to be great and helps us to transit well, look up please, is that all truly great people do not derive their confidence and their self-worth from the things that are outside them. Please listen. All great people do not derive their self-worth from the abundance of the external things that they have. Cars, houses, certificates, achievements, as powerful as all these things are, no truly great man, especially in the kingdom, derives his self-worth from the abundance of these things. That means that when I buy a new shoe, when I buy a new cloth, then I feel more successful when the cloth spoils, I feel less successful. That's a terrible way to live. Are we together now? The Bible, um, I think that should be, I hope it's, uh, what scripture now? Is it Luke chapter 12? It just came to my spirit. Let's look at it. Luke chapter 12, I believe it is. 
Jesus was teaching Luke chapter 12. Yes, and verse 15. Give it to us please quickly. Luke chapter 12 and verse 15. Everyone please look up his projected. Here's what the Bible says. Jesus is teaching now. And he said unto them, Take heed and beware of what? Covetousness. Greed. Greed. That's the word there. Greed. It says, For a man's life consisted not in the abundance of what? Things which he possesseth. That means the true value of your life and my life is not in cars, is not in houses. Are we together now? So you must bring yourself to a point where even though I'm trusting God for a car, a house, I'm trusting God for um, advanced certifications, I'm trusting God to go abroad, I'm trusting God to increase membership, I'm trusting God to have children, and so on and so forth. My life cannot be, and my sense of success cannot be defined by these things. You know why? Because these things vacillate. They go up and they go down. Praise the Lord. I was sharing, I think it was with our school of ministry students yesterday. And um, it started with the leaders during the leaders meeting. Um, I traveled to one of the states and my phone just fell into mud and water and it was just gone, just gone completely. And while they were still deciding for me what other phone I would buy to replace that one, I decided to take the old phone. Remember that my old phone that you people hate so much that you've done your best to make sure I throw away? You know, I dusted the whole thing and I got it back in shape. And then when I went for the leaders meeting, I could see the body language, all the leaders, oh, not again. You could see apostle, you've left this, you know, and all of that. And um, I used the opportunity to start sharing with them a bit of what I'm sharing with you now. Imagine that I tied my sense of self-worth to a, an exceptional phone. I will now begin to tell myself things that I think you are thinking. Ah, that means apostle's finances is going down. This one that he replaced this phone. Maybe he sold it all because he's broke. Because he's looking for something. Now remember you are not thinking that. It is a make-believe that has come as a result of my tying myself worth to phones. There are people who cannot leave their homes until they borrow certain things and wear. There are people who cannot because they have created perceptions there are men of God and women of God who cannot be themselves. More than half of their life is not them. It's a dangerous way to live. Listen very carefully. I show you a quick way to suicide. Tie your self-worth to things. And sooner or later you'll find out that you will need a knife, you will need a hoe, a cutlass, or a rope to kill yourself because of disappointed expectations. There are people who have tied their self-worth to the quality and the wealth of the kinds of families they have come from. So they will deny their parents because your mother is somewhere, maybe roasting corn or selling something by the road. And the impression that you have given people is that you are an exceptional Harvard type young man who most likely has spent a major part of his life abroad. And now they need to see your mother or your father and based on your belief system, you think that looking at her and her state will will be a disadvantage to the perception you are proposing. So you will call your mother, your auntie. Say, it's just one of our relatives that just came to stay with us. It's, I mean, even me, I'm surprised now seeing her outside. You think what I'm saying is silly, except for the fact that it is true. How many people will never be proud of even their homes, where they live, your family house? Yes, I know that they use mud to build it. But the mud is not inside your mind. But simply because you don't want, we have a slang that our generation calls, they call it falling your hand. Correct? How will I take these people in my department? My departmental people want to greet my parents. How will I now take them to a house that is smelling the, the humidity even inside the house? The carpet, I mean everything, there are roaches flying around. I don't want to be associated with that. Less. The person who wants to marry me, who has been perceiving that I'm a lady who was born inside an airplane 
may now have to make up his mind and change his perception let me advise you and let me encourage you i have a responsibility over you listen to me if you tie yourself worth to anything outside you get set for a shock in this life hallelujah god forbid but if any of my vehicles have break down and it's time for me to come for koinonia i would stop a bike outside quickly and say mr man please take me i'm late and and you know members can rob this they'll say my apostle the servant of the living god you know they they will rob it in and make you say bike stop stop let me just go back home tell them i'm not around if you need things to validate who you are you are in trouble because you will never have enough things that's why we seek to change phones listen let your motivation be a sincere desire to transit to a more effective version of yourself not that it is in the acquisition of these things that's why we are disappointed now i bought the phone now i i got the new hair now i got the clothes i got the designers i expected you to notice it and commend me and you ignored me so frustration starts are we together now did you not notice my perfume have you not noticed that i've changed perfume what is my business i'm thinking about my own destiny somewhere did you not notice i changed the car did you not notice i moved to a house have you not noticed that levels have changed i will never tie anything my self-worth to anything no matter how great they are i tell you the truth they are mundane things this teaching may not be popular but it's the way of peace it's not teaching you to be a mediocre it's giving you rest rest you've heard me say it again anything that is what's taking my life on i put it inside me god holy spirit quality information anything that is too big to enter inside me is not worth my attention people's vehicles spoiled and they they were too embarrassed to go to work why because they say ah Ogasi you or your car spoiled my self-worth and your self-worth must be a derivative of who you are in Christ and what he has done and what you now possess so the first thing I'm advising you and listen to me koinonia I have a responsibility over you and over those who are following the mainstream mindset is to receive an applause because of things you bought a new watch how much is this watch 300,000 Wow you are wearing a 300,000 watch that's somebody's salary for one year you are not a small man oh, and you enjoy it foolishly not knowing that that watch can be stolen it it can spoil it can leave you god can instruct you to sew it many things can happen around that watch why will you tie your self-worth and then you find out that you are no longer with the watch and then you are just looking someone may be noticing that i'm not wearing the watch uh, well let me just explain god asked me to, who asked you the, nobody is thinking about you as they are looking at you they are thinking about their problems ah, where will i call my mother now oh god let someone send me for an era recharge card and you are there in a make-believe of your own manufacture Say, I reject bondage. Shout it, I reject bondage. Ah, you used to, you used to wear a hair of 10,000 before. What happened? I noticed you have started wearing the one of 115 and 2. Is everything all right with your finance? What is your business? Does the 150 not stay? Oh, please. 
I noticed you used to bab every two weeks, but in the last one week, I'm just a concerned brother. It's like he, you is that you don't have money. If you don't have money, use bab. Just just clean it. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine for God's sake. Don't be under pressure and say, I must do this, I must be this. If you come to my house and meet me drinking Gary, I will only put it in a better cup if I honor you. But Gary, you must drink. I will not borrow money to buy minerals because of you. No. Listen to me. Be healed of this societal pressure. And let me tell all family people in Kononia, please hear me. Let nobody put pressure on you. Whether a minister, whether a leader, it should not be had in this ministry. That because anybody came to visit, they put pressure on you, you must fry plantain, fry chips. If you have it, praise God. If you don't, even if you don't have anything, put cold water in the fridge and serve. Do not derive self-worth. Don't expect people to treat you unusually just because you bought a new car. Just because you bought a new house. Um, just to let you know that levels have changed. Um, I got a job with NMPC and for starters, they gave me 1.5. And uh, because of that, I want to see Apostle. I don't have the time to join the queue. Can you please fast track the thing? I have a seed and the seed is a sizable one. What do you think I am? That's why it's good for a man of God to be blessed. Because when you are blessed, you are not looking at anybody's envelope and checking the size. No. No, we know man after the flesh. Please listen very carefully. Say in the name of Jesus, my confidence and my self-worth will never be on external things. It will be on who I am in Christ. And what Jesus has done in my life. So be proud of yourself and be proud of your level. If it's only one shoe you have, wear it every Friday. Wear it every Sunday. Let us see it as a testament. So that the day God blesses you, anybody who says it was a mistake, you will not be the one to answer. I'll say I was a witness. I saw that one shoe for two years while he was walking the world. Are we together? Sisters, don't let any brother come to you in the abundance of substance or things. Just to toy around with your mind and toy around with your life. And say, you know, I'm this and that and that. My father is a governor of which state? What is your surname? Are the states in Nigeria many that we don't know? My father is a this. My father is a king. My mother is a this. I'm a prince. As you see, I'm just a humble one. No. Whether you are a prince or not, that's not anybody's business. People should honor you because of genuine character. That you are a man of character. That you are a woman of character. is a nobler reason for honor than things. Number two. Ready? Koinonia <laughs> is growing. Praise the Lord. You must conquer greed. Write it down. The one cancer behind the, the restraint of God to bless many people. Greed. 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 You know, most people think rich people are the ones who are greedy. I tell you this sincerely. The reason why many poor people, poor Christians especially, who have an advantage of the Holy Spirit. If you have an advantage of the Holy Spirit and he's watching you poor, there's something you are doing to him. He's there as the advantage in your life. Greed. Many believers are greedy. It's shown in their givings. You started giving 10 naira as a student, as offering. And now you are director. You are giving 20 naira. Is that the measure of the lifting of God upon your life? No. Greed. Closely related to greed, please write. Selfishness. A selfish generation will never become an impactful generation. 
please listen very carefully jesus christ is speaking to us a selfish generation will never become an impactful generation what is selfishness look at this come doctor selfishness and self-centeredness is when you desire something so bad you do not care what effect it creates on others selfishness is not desiring good things it is desiring good things to the point that you do not care what it does to others that means that i so want to get to this speaker i don't care if i match and i match and i put dr emeka i just want to reach there there are many of us who are like that many nigerians are like that and i'm cautioning you because it's a spirit everywhere it's like nobody cares about the effect of what they are they are wanting to rise causes for others i want to be a ceo i will kill anybody if possible to be that ceo me myself the language of our generation is what is in it for me once there is nothing in it for you it's not your business no it's not the language of great people great leaders great leaders are selfless people great people are selfless people the bible says looking up to jesus jesus did not come to the earth to pursue an agenda of himself please listen to me i've taught us that it is about us but not all about us when your life becomes all about you then you are in trouble This ministry was founded upon selflessness. Truly, selflessness. Many of you, as you are now, God is helping you, but you want to so grow and rise. There is none of our children here that is going to school because of your school fees. You are waiting till the day you become a millionaire. Some of them, their school fees is 2,000, 3,000, 10,000. You are so engrossed. You can package 100,000 and bring. Let me lay hands on you to climb the ladder fast. But a little child can come and hug you and say, Uncle, I'm not going to school. Let me join. Am I your, am I your, your father? You see that? Selflessness. Selflessness. The selfishness in our world is so terrible. So terrible. People will do anything and not mind. They will, they will hit your car on the road because they want to hurry up. Break your, your, your what they call it, your side mirror and just hold you and say sorry. As if that's the solution to it. I'm in a hurry. To where? How about many of us here? You don't care if your siblings rise. Listen, you are not called to carry everybody's load in your life. But you are called to at least pay attention to the effect of what your rising is creating. You can't ignore everybody and your whole world is about you. Ladies, listen to me. Because you are the ones that are most hit with this mindset. It is always about me. My money is for me. My everything is for me. Someone can give you 2,000 naira recharge card as a seed. You will flash him to call you so you will say thank you. What do we call that? Greed and selfishness. Listen. Listen to me. Many of our parents today, many of our parents, respectfully speaking and with due honor to our elderly people here, many of our parents, this is what closed their door. They were so willing to succeed that they kicked every destiny helper out. And when they got to a place where they needed help, there was nobody to help them now. When they were in the civil service, some of them got to the echelon of their, their pursuit. They never raised anybody. All they were concerned about is me. I must sit down and eat. And now they've retired. No young person can come and say, Sir, in 1995, it was because of you I got a job. Today I've come with a seed to say thank you. Let me tell you, sincerely speaking, many of us here are young people, but let me tell you, if you are old 
and nobody sees the need to take care of you and to say thank you is a sign that you spent your life in selfishness and greed are we together last year during my birthday the greatest gift that was given to me was a letter by my little children they write me letters all the time they write all kinds of things but i love their letters and i read every one of it they draw love they write jesus on it they try to draw my face they write you have been a nice daddy thank you those things mean a lot to me than chicken than whatever it is you eat those things and go to the toilet and it's all but those things are a reflection it's a sign that when you are old those ones they can come to you and say make sure this person never cries even in old age you say but it's not your father he said he was better than my father if nobody can remember you for good it's a sign that you are digging the grave already even while you are alive please hear me great people are not great because they are pursuing all they want it's not all about you everything god gives you people should rejoice with you because they know that by the grace of god and with all humility even if it's the crumbs from the table it will reach them i look at us please look at me i can tell you why god has not answered your prayer of financial prosperity he has discerned the extent of greed that in your being blessed nobody nobody many of us are so greedy and selfish that anytime you are blessing somebody they know that you are looking for something whether you are looking for a life partner or you are looking for a destiny helper or you are looking for for something it is not you to give i think if i stop giving it may affect me i may even fall down and die But you know, Apostle, we are not very blessed. It's you people that God has helped. That is the talk of a greedy person. If you can't give clothes, there is food. One day you can make up your mind to cook two pots of food and call somebody and say, I may not do much now, but I am breaking the spirit of greed. Please come and eat in my house. They come the next day and say, no, no, no. I was only training myself. Don't come every day. Don't be ashamed of saying it because human beings will always take you for granted. You do it once and pursue them and don't feel bad. Tell them, please, at training, I will, when, when I get to that realm, you will come. But for now, come and eat. Are we together? Say in the name of Jesus, the spirit of greed, the spirit of selfishness, I curse it from my life. Many believers are like that. Two women or two men can be talking. I can be talking with Dr. Emeka. And in his presence, I will bring out 2,000 naira. Buy egg roll and minerals. And hold it while we are talking. And finish it and eat the egg roll and squeeze the leather and match it. Hapa! It's inhuman to live like that giving is living you must trust god for grace don't wait till you are a millionaire i'm telling you listen this these are belief systems that will make your life exceptional god will never trust a greedy and a selfish person when he sends a word to jacob is because jacob can let that word reach israel if God gives you money, can God look at many people in Koinonia today and say, instead of blessing five people and giving them school fees, I know they are coming, but can I bless you? And then they rejoice. The angels rejoice and say, these children have gone to school. Why? Because one person was blessed. What does it take for God to give you a job? What does it take for God to turn the economic tide in your life? It takes more than studying business. Let me tell you, it takes more than we've taught you a lot and you know that there are astute business people in this place. We're not just men of God. We're not daft people. We're economically sound. We're financially sound. But I tell you this, much more than just the value you give, 
who you are is higher than what you do. I had a conversation of recent with a very wealthy man, such a rare privilege, and I met him, and I asked him one question. I said, sir, let me ask you one question. I said, what kind of people will you be looking for at this level? And he looked at me and smiled and said, Apostle, you are very smart. I said, thank you, sir. My mind was just on the answer. And he said, should I tell you honesty? He said, yes. And then he kept quiet and took a deep breath. He said, I will answer you in a story. And then he told me a story. And at the end of it, he said, let me test. I already told you you are intelligent. What kind of people do you think I'll be needing? I said, trustworthy people. He said, that's it. The morale of the story he gave me was that he would pay any amount to have people who are selfless enough. He said every storekeeper and every foreman he employed cheated him. And 95% of them were Christians. Recommended by pastors. He sincerely told me that the non-believers who have handled that branch of his business have been more honest than even the people. Because of greed. 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 Let them know that the word is working. So you steal everything. You steal cement. You steal everything and sell it and quietly cover it up. Do you not know that when truth was buried, it came out of the grave? Hallelujah. There are very, very... Listen, let me teach you this. If you are a businessman here, please, more than value and productivity, look for selfless people. When you find selfless people, you have not found cheap people. You have found priceless people. Our generation is full of everybody who is looking for everything for myself. Let me quickly cash in on the moment while I have the time. Some of you looking at me now as born again as you are. Let me keep you in a room with plenty money scattered. If I count it, you will behave because it's counted. But let me just scatter it and leave you. You will first check whether there's a CCTV. Look around and pray in tongues so that those outside would think there's prayer going on. And you just bend as if you are sweeping and carry one and put in your pocket. Who do you think is watching? God alone? Demons. Angels. The demons that will oppress you and you will shout in the name of Jesus. <laughs> are you joking? Please, I pray for you in the name of Jesus that the grace to be selfless may that grace come upon you yeah. there are nurses that are not selfless is that not so in your hospital there are doctors that are not selfless a woman comes she wants to give birth and they are acting as if please madam if you would die self, just die there whereas that woman has been trusting God for a child for 12 years and you see the greed and the selflessness are you from my tribe? Are you from my place? Are you from here? No. Selflessness. I, these are the things I pray for for myself. These are the things that have brought blessings to my life. That you show God. I told you that the Lord told me, if you will let men see me, there is nothing I will not give you. There are many of you that desire anointing. Apostle, anoint me. And I look at you. It's not even God. Even me, I know. The things you will do if that anointing really comes. You will first run to your enemies and say you are finished. You don't know what I'm carrying. Just know it's over. And if you think I'm joking, you, you will die tomorrow. You, you will die on Thursday. By the time you kill people in a row in one week, you say, what? This grace is powerful. Even me, I didn't know it's this powerful. Listen to my message. Can God trust you? Go and listen to it. Please, media, let our family online and in diaspora listen to that message. Can God trust you? 
powerful message many times it is not just in the fasting and the prayer as powerful as it is is positioning yourself god let me be your treasurer on earth the last treasurer betrayed you here is a faithful one and god is saying can i trust you say yes trust me god gives you five hundred thousand. your spirit is still sound your head is still sound and he sees how you bless people you say you did this for me let me take it to another level whereas all your prayer from your small mind is god give me five million. Oh god give me five five million will change my life based on what your mind told you whereas he's thinking of giving you gold as dust and giving you the keys to the hearts of nations lord give me the grace to prophesy as soon as god gives you that grace you just say i found my stream of income i'm not wasting my time for anything again i would never prophesy free i it didn't it was not i got the anointing at a cost and god says you see your heart you were there fasting i warned you and now that you have the anointing and because it is valuable people will now begin to pay hundred thousand per prophecy thirty thousand per prophecy and the truth is that the grace will work and while you are paying and paying you are happy you are building houses collecting people's houses collecting people's cars and doing all of that god is watching you he's watching you because he knows one day you will exhaust that realm so you go back again and say lord i'm here he said, it's not me you are talking to it's not me you are talking to i gave you a grace i saw what you did with that grace lord give me the kind of apostles grace and he tests you 20 missed calls by 1 a.m you don't answer any one of them the 21st one you call and say let me tell you something i'm a human being too i sleep i this i that i hate you don't do this to me again the next time you do it. and god says look at the grace you want listen 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 please look at me selflessness is an unusual virtue that is the reason why not everybody has it why will you reward everybody when they have the same thing dr mike Murdoch says that our similarities create our comfort it's our difference that creates our reward hallelujah how far can you go for the sake of people how far can you go for the sake of god some of you have vehicles you've never carried anybody after service even if it's raining you horn them and say you are going and god is watching and you already say no god i'm trusting you to give me one car that i saw on my way going somewhere and god says you think i'm stupid there are some of you even if it's on a bike or a bicycle you will never help anybody may god never give you anything that you will regret did you hear what i said may god never give you anything that you will say i feel pained that i gave this man this maybe i'll stop here Let me just talk about it the third trait you must embrace is humility i have to talk about it our time is gone but spare me two three five minutes humility humility please look at me the bible says love not the world nor the things that are in this world he says if any man love the world the love of the father is not in him then it categorizes the things we can love into three the lust of the eyes the lust of the flesh number three is called the pride of life there are many people please listen to me you see ba africa hear me now i'm not just talking to zaria i'm not just talking to nigeria i'm talking to africa listen to me because of our background huh and the way we have suffered and the way people have looked down on us and some of us because of our cultural context please listen to me there is that itch to be celebrated there is that itch that urge to be perceived as great and valuable 
Are we together? And there's nothing wrong with that. We call it spotlight. Is the slang we have for it. Some of you, I just mentioned spotlight. You're already laughing. I mean, you just imagine yourself. There's nothing wrong with that. Except for the fact that Pride is one thing that will make God fight a man. God will not fight a man because of sin. God will not fight a man even because of disobedience. But pride, it says that God gives, opposes the proud and gives grace to the humble. One of the, one of the, one of the greatest justification for pride is wealth an achievement please listen wealth and achievement every time god warned people of pride it had to do with wealth and achievement deuteronomy chapter 8 you don't have to turn there just read the bible says let it not be that when you have what built houses and done this done this and that achievement that you will say my power and the might of my hand has given me this. And then verse 18 says, But thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he, it is he. Leave the remaining statement. It is he. He is the focus. Humility is not refusing what God has done. Humility is not simplicity. Humility is acknowledging God as the basis of every achievement that you have. Outspokenly, in your body language and in your conversation god it is unto you apostle joshua selman the great man changing people ah a man can receive nothing precious people except it is given to him from god it's very difficult for some of you to say this thing why because you feel if i say it i'm taking away the spotlight from me pride there are many people, there are many parents who would have been lifted, but pride, pride. They will not be good examples. Look at me. Let me tell you why some of you are finding it difficult to access the blessings of God to lift you. You are not going to be a good model being blessed. You are the best Christian model at your current state. If you rise higher than that, especially financially, you will kill people. Some of you, if you rise financially, your mother, your father, your siblings, and everybody, they will kneel down to greet you every morning. Simply because you paid rent. Simply because you paid this. I failed in life and people I think I'm a failure. But now that I've succeeded, I will rub it on the face of everybody. No. That is the way of the world. We are kingdom people. Can you be blessed and still remain humble? Can you be blessed and still stoop down to people's levels? Can you be blessed and not disturb people with noisy of your achievement? <laughs> just, to, just to meet you and say, ah, um, um, just to let you know, are you aware that I just came back from Lagos and uh, I flew in? You came. That's the most important thing. Whether you crawled, whether you drove, whether you flew, avoid some of those, those talks. I was in the plane and ah you know i was uh, i was i don't know have you ever sat down in a business class because i'm trying to explain something i don't know if you can understand you see let me tell this is why many great people are persecuted in the church because we don't know how to keep quiet success is already loud on itself if you dare rub it in members all and sundry will get back at you and they will find a reason to get back at you let me tell you something. It is difficult to criticize a humble man, even if you are right. Humility paralyzes you. you what will you now say? Are we together? I'm saying this because we are in a very prophetic season where God is lifting many of us. Many people are not humble. They are only broke. By the time the blessings of the Lord comes, you will see the attitude, the pungency of pride. Pride is one thing that is a destroyer. Even if you kill Satan and all the demons, proud people will still die. 
there is nothing that gives me beauty and glory as the world shining the light on me then i hold the light and shine it i'm proud to be the usher shining it to say people thank god for joshua selman and everything that's why you notice every time people want to celebrate me for anything i become uncomfortable when i'm preaching i can be bold i can be this if i drop this mic now and you start saying well there is a man here that thing shade was doing you see that i felt like dying if i had my way i would just send my picture to stand and represent me but some of you you like it as joking as it is some of you as you are sitting you're ah let my month come if they give me this opportunity i will first cut the cake and leave back the knife let them snap me alone before everybody comes the urge the urge the urge to outshine huh in in a in a secular business way that's all right but in a kingdom way the the urge to want to just receive vain glory please you must trust god to conquer it conquer it conquer it it's one of the big restraints that many of us may face you know many times i pray for you sincerely i do and i ask the lord i say lord continue to bless and lift my people I'm a, among the many things i get impressions of in my spirit is their tendencies god doesn't directly say pride tendencies vulnerabilities things that can happen that you are not aware of if you ever think money does not have power think again did you hear what i said think again money has power put money in a ring with any boxer it will beat him out before he enters money is powerful anything that can turn a man around without using sword is powerful anything that can relocate a man without advice is powerful money is powerful but when it begins to come with it it will solve other problems and create others hallelujah can you let jesus be seen in your life can you be lifted that 10 million naira just entered your account and you still come for koinonia and just sit down not to say if you push me if you push me if you push me please i don't have time for thieves now what happened god has blessed me you're laughing but these are the things that are enshrined in our hearts so that they will know i'm a big man so that they will know i'm rich well for your information that jeep you are seeing is my car for your information just to let you know that uh, i'll be in uk on tuesday quickly touch the u.s thursday and uh, i'll try to make coin on you i'm still coming god is watching all those things it's not a testimony you are sharing there are many things that are not testimonies testimonies the goal of testimonies is edification not announcement edification so the part you stress in a testimony is the edification truly let me tell you something i vowed a vow to god and i say lord whatever you will give me that will make me proud i'm praying in advance no matter how i cry don't answer me don't answer me humility is a powerful thing can you have access and still be humble can you have increase and still stay humble are you hearing what i'm saying don't say we're like that in our family it means all of you need to hear this message it doesn't mean you are right just because everybody is like that we are like that if we have it we show it if we don't have it we don't show it but it ought not to be so jesus is teaching when you come into the kingdom you don't come with the baggages of your belief you drop it aside and adopt the value system of the kingdom there is nothing as powerful as being blessed and being humble your life is a message in action in action and it's amazing that many people what you call wealth is not wealth it's just a test 1.5 and people are in trouble 1.5 entered my account 
I have 1.5 million. Oh, well, now it has gone back to 1.4. I use 100,000. And while you are talking, you may believe you are impressing everybody. Whereas scattered among you, there are accounts that if you see, you will not wake up again. You will not wake up. I'm telling you, it's not the, you, there are some things you act like you are used to seeing. No, there are things you are not used to seeing. You will see things that you will not know what part of your body to react with. And yet, people can have those things and be quiet. Moses had the ability to prophesy from morning till night. The grace of the prophetic was so much in him, yet Moses was quiet. Part of his spirit was taken out. They called elders who had followed him. Seventy people received the spirit of Moses. Nobody could keep quiet. Ah, I thus hear the Lord from morning till night. And Moses was watching them. Moses said, this thing that is making you make noise, times ten of it is what was in me, yet I was quiet. Can you have so much and be quiet? Can you know so much and be quiet? There are people, if you know so much, when someone is talking once, it's wrong. Let me correct you, sorry. That's what I studied. No, no, that's my feeling. I won't keep quiet. It is powerful to know so much. There are times that I listen to people as they talk. And many times what they are saying doesn't make a lot of sense. Spiritually and even intellectually. I know a lot more than what they are saying. But I honor them because they have more results than me. I keep quiet and I just hear. You understand what I'm saying? I say, yes, sir. Yes, sir. And what the man is saying is, is, is quite honestly nonsense. And I just keep quiet and I listen. He say, ah. And sometimes they are, they are flattered. They are impressed because of the whole thing. Just listen and say, yes, sir. And keep quiet. Not, sir. With all due respect, I don't want to talk while I was just keeping quiet. But, Sakai, this your thing is outdated. No. You lose many opportunities like that. In the name of Jesus, may this ministry even with the things that God is doing, bring people who are exceptionally blessed and humbled. That a time will come when people will pack cars that if you want to see it, you only come for koinonia and you will not even know who is who. People will just be rolling, rolling on the ground. It's after the grace. You will just see a tiny lady say, let me rush home. You would think she's calling a bike man and she will enter a car that was your dream that you plan to buy in 30 years and you say that's the owner i said that's the owner that lady is a ceo of something he said was she not the one rolling up and down that's a message koinonia extended extended through your life don't brag around and move around making noise i have this i have that listen when you are under pressure to keep saying things it's a sign that you have complex yourself you must be healed, be strengthened. The Lord is releasing people from all kinds of bondages. The power of God is touching somebody outside. In a mighty way, somebody outside. That devil of darkness, you will let her go. Come out of her right now. Come out of her. Devil of darkness. Out. The fire of the Holy Ghost. The fire of the Holy Ghost. It's against you tonight. Hallelujah.
down. Please hold my hands. Come out of her now. Bring her. Yeah. 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 Two of you come out. Let this girl go now. Foul devil of darkness. Come out of her. Out. You're free in the name of Jesus Christ. Stand up. Let this girl go now. Thou foul devil. In the name that is above all names. Out you go. Out now. Come out of her. Out of her. Please make sure everyone is connecting. This has nothing to do with falling down. God is visiting people. Look at me. You, look at me. Just look at me. No, you don't need to come out. Just look at me. Look at me. Just keep your eyes looking at me. Let this girl go now. The foul devil of darkness. I come against you and against the infirmity. Come out of her. your night of visitation. Hold my hands. Come out of her! God is going to visit this whole family. Hallelujah. Because I'm seeing the thing of darkness. This is what God is showing me. I didn't even know I was pointing to family members. Hallelujah. Mommy, let me pray for you. Because this is, this is a demonic thing. Trying to affect your health. Please hold my hands. Mommy, please look. Please, if you can shout Jesus as loud as you can. Can you? Just as loud as you can. Go ahead. name that is above all names. Please lay one hand on your chest. Let her go. Let her go. Let her go. This is a curse of marital delay. Let her go. Now! Thank you, Jesus. Come out of her! Out of her! out you're free same thing come out of her right now devil of darkness you're leaving I see you in the spirit you're going it's time for this family to step into a new level be free Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. 
any lump, lump in your breast, lump anywhere is going to live right now. Make sure you check yourself. Instant miracles of lumps. I, I saw it and the Lord told me it's time. I want to pray it right now. I told somebody to come out. I brought somebody from that room. Who is the person? I told that God will visit her. Not the woman. Do you know why I called you out? The Lord will wipe these tears that you're crying tonight. Are you listening to me? Just look at me. Roll away. Shame and reproach. Roll away. Shame and reproach. Give her a new beginning, oh God. Visit her family. I want to rebuke lumps right now. There's nothing to be ashamed of. This is, this is God is helping people. There are people you've had lumps, multiple lumps in your breast. It's going to disappear right now. Hallelujah. Maybe we'll have a few. Let me tell you something with this lady. You notice she's always coming out. I will see her afterwards. A literal human being appears to sleep with this girl. This is what is responsible. This is, this, is, this is not just an issue of deliverance. This is an issue of help. This is a family thing. This is what the Lord is showing me. This is not just the devil coming. I mean, this is not in a dream. Uh -uh. You see, that's why whenever they come, these spirits leave her, but they don't go away. Early in the morning, they will reappear again. That's it. So, just, just let her be. God will set her free. Hallelujah. Are you ready, Lums? In the name of Jesus. Please, as soon as I pray for you, make sure you start checking yourself. Many of you will be shocked. It will look like magic. Maybe we'll take some testimonies here. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus Christ, every lump in your breast or any part of your body, your neck, your waist, wherever, right now, I command it to disappear. In the name of Jesus, I command it to leave. Be healed right now. Be healed right now. Go ahead, begin to check yourselves. Come, bring that child. Can we have the mic, please? What's, 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 this, what's the issue? Help us with the mic, please. He has not been eating. Who brought him? Whose child is this? Where is his mother? If we are calling your child, Mama, please come. Let's save time. Huh? They came all the way from Kano. Yes, I asked them to come. You rejoice because you will know you meet God tonight. Amen. Please, somebody hold this child because you two come out of her. Out! Hold this child, please. You are the first to be visited all the way from Kano. That devil, this woman is supposed to die before the end of the year. I curse this spirit out right now. Out of her with a loud shout, you are going. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. What's wrong with the child? He has not been eating. So we take him to the office. Why did he have all this abnormality? The so, doctors. Madam, look at me. You are delivered. I don't know what it is that runs through your leg. But I'm seeing light. Power of God. Hallelujah. What happened to your child? Talk to us, please. Let's save time. I gave back to him normal. It was normal when I gave back to him. Okay. So when he was four months, we discovered that the front I was enlarging. So we went to hospital after a, the scanning. They said that there is water in the head. That water came. Water? Yes. That's hydrocephalus. So we need doctors. Who is a doctor here? They said he was going to undergo operation. 
Not student doctor. Eh? Okay, come. Thank you. Sir. What? They say hydrocephalus. What's that? Hydrocephalus is accumulation of water in, in the furnaces of the brain. Okay, what does it what does it lead to this? Yes. It will keep on enlarging until the capacity of the bone is able to contain it. So the bone itself will keep on enlarging and the sinuses, that is the sutures, will keep on expanding. Does it have a medical cure? Um, the only medical cure is to drain the water. But even as at that, I don't think it has a medical cure. For this purpose was the Son of God made manifest. That he might destroy the works of you. See, the Bible says from the beginning it was not so. This is nonsense. Are you listening to me? And our job is to bring everything back to the obedience of Christ. Hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray. This demonic, you did not create. Look at me. Come back. Leave her. Leave her. Leave her. Leave her. Don't talk to her. She will come back. You will come back with a testimony. This child's head will start reducing. Are you hearing me? This child, it supernaturally, you will see it go back. Are you listening to me? Hold on, I know. I'm seeing a girl. Baby girl. That was my first daughter. I lost her. Where is she? She's dead. She's dead. That's what I said. The spirit of death. You would have died before the end of the year because I'm seeing a baby girl. And then I didn't see her again. Where's your husband? He's in Canada. Get ready. A baby girl is coming again. Huh? Are you listening to me? Yes. I have three boys. I just gave birth. It was still a boy. I was not happy. That's what I'm telling you. Did, did you discuss this with me? Did you discuss this no, with me? No. Please, if I don't call any case, don't start bringing people out, please. Please, time, but let her come out. If we, if if we don't call cases, please, we are taking this. I'm, me I'm meeting you for the first time. That's what I'm saying. Knowing me is not important. It's the Lord Jesus Christ whom you know. He will come back here and give a testimony Amen. of a baby Amen. girl. Amen. All right, the flame of death. And tell your husband where is he walking? He walked with his school. And then what happened? He's still working. He's still working there. Yes. That's not where he's supposed to be. Huh? We take him to the rightful place. Amen. Where God will bless him. Because this, this has been a financial challenge. This is issue of money. Yes. Yes. Is that true? Yes. But you people too are not very faithful in tithing. So you must have been faithful in tithing. Huh? Did you discuss it with me? No. You would tie it one today because of an emotional message. The only way God knows. You open the door for Satan. Hmm? Madam, you will go back with favor. Amen. I release upon you that grace for favor. You came with them. What's wrong with his ears? Uh, they took him to the hospital. He was. He it's still as a result. It's as a result of all of these things. It's connected. Don't worry. As God is taking him back, there will be complete restoration. Amen. Hmm? Your son will not. You will come back here with testimonies. Who are you? You know them, or you're from Kano too? My elder sister. Your elder sister. Yes, Tell sir. me one thing you want the Lord to do for you. To heal. Think well, not him. You. Don't just talk carelessly. I'm not. Not many people will have the opportunity to be asked this question. Let me tell you. To help my family with open doors of favor. Where is your father? My father is late. Where's your mother? Behind them. No, no, no. I'm not saying she should come out. Okay. She's sitting behind them. You are a student? Yes. I finished my secondary school tonight. So I've been writing jumps since. This is what you would have asked. This is why I asked you. That's what I was praying for you. Eh? You have your relatives here. People who know you who are also praying for you. Hold my hands. Get into the university. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. 
whatever the problem is we cancel it here right now i don't care what it is we admit you into any university of your choice in the name of the lord jesus christ this is your number one desire god will locate your family bless you where is please who brought this woman please if we don't call your case we are going to we are going to deal with this if not we'll have this place very rowdy now who brought this woman Oh yeah, come now. Who brought her? No, no, don't worry, don't worry. What's wrong with her? She has brain problem. Brain. She lost her memory. She lost her memory. She's lost her memory. She doesn't know you now. Ah. What happened? Don't know. I'm just her house help. Oh, you are just her house help. Come and help me. Look at this girl. Many house helps. This is the time to plunder and run away, Pastor. May God turn you from a house help to a great woman. This is your own blessing this night. Hallelujah. This is terrible. Thank you, Jesus. That devil of darkness, he will let this woman go. I bring you life. Life to these dead cells, dead brains. In the name of Jesus. Stand up. Stand up. You look at me. Just look at me. Just look at me. Just try to look at me. You come back to your miracle. Find somewhere and keep this noise again. Sweetheart, I pray for you. May the Lord visit you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Somebody brought somebody brought a very sick person. Did you know outside the Lord? I'm saying we'll pray for them, but the Lord is showing me. You brought somebody. Is he a sick person? Who is that person? Inside or outside? Please, let's save time more. God really wants to visit people and we don't want to waste unnecessary time here. He will come back with testimonies for this woman. It's terrible. Hallelujah. The Lord is showing me someone. You literally feel as though they put pepper in your eyes. When you look at light like this, it burns you seriously. This thing started this year. Who is that person, please? Who is that person? Who is that person? Oh, is she the okay? Come. Who brought her? Mama? Does she, can I speak English or does she want answer? Come now. Why are you afraid? Huh? What's, what's the issue? Diabetes. Diabetes. It's affecting, also her eyes. it's affecting her eyes. I will pray for her. Tell her I will pray for her and the Lord will heal her. Is she hearing? Is she here? Mama, I will pray for you right now. is a spirit be healed of diabetes right now I come against that foul spirit
level of darkness. She should go and check herself. She should find out that there's no diabetes again. You, you came for yourself. What's wrong with you? Um, it's not that I'm sick. Okay. I need married and I'm... you want to get married. Go straight to the point. Look, let me tell you something. If we ask you to come out here and we and you are just talking stories, you go back to your seat. Praise God. This is this is a family. Nobody is against marriage here. Is that true? If you came here for marriage, when we are praying, receive it. Don't say my neighbor will look. You don't want to get married. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Look at me. Did you hear the testimonies of the marriage? Sir? The marriage yes, testimony is, do you believe God is still at work in this place? Yes, sir. Hold my hands. Are you in a relationship? Yes. You need to be delivered first before marriage. Hmm? I release you from this curse. This is what has been holding her back. Let her go. Let her go. Let her go. We will come back with testimonies in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, I want to pray for supernatural marriages. Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? Some of you will need to outside. Are you, can you hear me outside? You can stand for yourself or for your family members. I want to pray. Make sure the person you want to get married to is of the opposite sex. Hallelujah. Can I pray for you? Please believe the Lord. Because one of the things that has been happening in this place is supernatural inexplainable the hand of God lift your hands hmm. in the name that is above all names now there are some of you as I pray you see some of you what is stopping you is the hand of darkness for a few people not everybody because I'm seeing spirits the moment I pray by the power of the Holy Ghost, the hand of God will come upon some people. Hallelujah. It will come upon them in a mighty way. That's what is stopping the marriage. Lift your hands. Not everybody you can receive, but there are some people, this is what they need. Hallelujah. When I say in the name of Jesus, I just want you to shout, I receive. The moment you say that God will visit some people, I see God touching two ladies outside on this. This this marriage thing, we must deal with it this night. How many of you believe it? In the mighty name of Jesus. Now that devil of darkness that is responsible for delay in marriages. Come out right now. Come out right now. Come out right now. That devil of darkness that is responsible. The power of God is falling. That devil. There are spirits that are responsible for delay. Come out. 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 These are demon spirits. Out in the name of Jesus. The Lord rebuke you. The Lord rebuke you. Marital delay. The Lord rebuke you. I tell you, God is setting people free. Marital delay as is happening. Marital delay. Marital delay is a yoke of bondage outside. The fire of God is visiting a few people. All those 
those above 30, 30 and above who have not gotten married, ladies, let God visit you now. I release that fire. Shake it, take 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 the fire of the Holy Ghost. The fire of the Holy Ghost. Let there be testimonies of supernatural marriages. This row. I see an angel standing. There is one lady. The power of God will come upon you strong. That devil of darkness. Enough is enough. Just this row. Because I see the angel of the Lord standing. Lord, let that person come out. The Holy Ghost will bring you out. You will come out. You will come out. You will come out by the power of the Holy Ghost. Leave her alone. She will come out. No. Hallelujah. I want to curse barrenness. Are you listening to me? Now is the time to stand for your loved ones, for yourself. Some of you lived all kinds of reckless past lives. As you are standing now, you may not even have a womb. A new one will come upon you. When God forgives sins, He forgives consequences. I don't care what the biological complication is. I like you to receive. You will come back with testimonies. Hallelujah. Now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. That curse of childlessness. In the name of Jesus. I set you free. I set you free. I set your loved ones free. I set you free. Any barren person in this place, any barren family in this place, ma ta 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 ta, re ke te te te, re ke te te te, re ke bo shoto, ba koko bo te ke, re ke te bo soko toba, le ke bo yata, ma re ke te 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 te, e ke bo ro toba kata. You will come back with miracle children. You will come back with miracle children. Your loved ones will come back with miracle children. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to pray for a few people. Don't be afraid. Don't be ashamed. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. God is showing me some people. You've been so you are an adult, but you don't know what happens. You've been suffering from bedwetting. You wake up in the morning and you find out that you are easing yourself on your bed. There's, no, there's nothing to be embarrassed. Man. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You are that kind of person. Come and stand out here quickly. Forget about who is watching you. Nobody has that time. Let me tell you. There are people like that, a devil of darkness inside and outside this is a this is a demonic issue there are people low there are people don't be afraid don't be ashamed it's a spirit it's not just about discipline. You can't stop it with discipline. I don't know why God is visiting that situation. Hallelujah. Let's take the next case. I'm seeing problems with your heart. Whether hole in your heart or any form of asthmatic condition. Please come out quickly. Hole in your heart or asthmatic condition. Please let's save time. Release 
her, let her go. In the name of Jesus, foul spirit of darkness. Asthma, hold in your heart. Heart. Heart enlargement. That devil is a liar. I've, I had an accident. After the accident, they said my heart will enlarge and there is uh, infection. It will, it will go back. Amen. Be free right now. Amen. Heart, return to your normal condition. Infection, go. In the name of the Lord Jesus. As I lay hands on you, whatever the issue is, you will be healed of it. Whether heart, asthma, be free right now. Please make sure you are coming out for the case we mentioned. What are you coming out for? Feeling a hole in my heart. Always, ever since I suffered from ulcer. After Did the, the doctors treatment. tell you? Yes. After the treatment, the ulcer has been stopping me, but it's just for a while. But that hole. Sister, come. God will visit you. This has nothing to do with ulcer. Hmm? Where's your? You have an elder sister? Yes. Where is she? She's in Abuja. Is she married? Yes. What What's yes. she doing? She's married, but the first child she gave birth to, it has been a problematic child. But this is six years now. She has not stepped her feet on the on the ground, and she has not started talking. And Let all this why she has not given birth at all. Lay one hand on your chest. See, whatever is happening to one person here is happening to you too. Are you listening to me? You must believe it. This lady with yellow. That lady, you, you. Look. No, no, don't come out. Just lift your hands where you are. Both of your hands now. Are you pledging? Look at me. Father, visit this girl. The Lord is showing me something about her. Lord, visit this lady. Set her free. It's like a mighty rushing wind. That spirit will not stand. It's looking like a knife is going through you. Set her free, Lord. What's wrong with you? Lay your hands there. Since when? Just lay your hands and look at me. Don't worry. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Heart. Okay, just hold my hands as I pray for you. You'll be free. Be free in the name of Jesus. Come. You love God very well. What of you is not true? How true is it? Eh? Shall we see how true it is? Lord, visit him. I break this addiction from your life. Does it make sense to you what I'm saying? Why did you say it's true? You do. Amen. Let it not corrupt your Christian testimony. Amen. God is not just visiting you, but your family. You are in for it with God this night because it's, it's multiple. Some families have put some people in trouble they don't know. 
parents in their innocence have gone to do things in a bid to try to help the be healed, be free in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ be made whole, be free this is what is happening this thing is all the way from Lagos this is God setting this lady free sometimes we do things parents be careful you go to places and do things believing you are helping your children be free in the name of Jesus be free in the name of Jesus I release you in the name of Jesus Christ because God wants to use you in your mighty healing ministry. Be healed in the name of Jesus. My brother, God is calling you this night. When I make the altar call, before I finish, just run and come and stand here. Right? This is your night. Eh? There is no issue of running to God and then... God brought you because we love you. Okay? You deserve You deserve You deserve The lifting of my You deserve Just walk with me. You deserve. Don't be looking at me. Don't worry. confusion and this is why God is telling me this is how your life is that's why I held you and I was walking God wants to set you free from serious confusion you are easily deceived anybody can tell you anything and that's why I was moving around this does not this is confusion you get easily deceived anybody just say anything and you believe can I pray for you hold my hands both of your hands Satan, it's time up for you with this lady. Foul spirit. You will let this lady go. Release her. You can't stand it. I've seen you in the spirit. God is against you. This demonic thing must leave you. So pakapata. Reketebola kuso pretika debaus. That you will have a strong heart. The Bible says, "Be wise as serpents." What are you here for, my sister? Oh, while you were praying, you saw yourself on the ground. You decided to come and report yourself. <laughs> what do you think God is doing? Just stretch your hands like you're receiving something. Look at me. Truly, you will receive something. Just look at me. Suddenly, to become happy because you are receiving spiritual things. <laughs> you can't hold it. It's too heavy for you.
for you and for all your family members. May God visit you. God is not done with you. There is a fire that will burn you. The same thing will be happening to your family members. You need to be free. You love God, but there are all kinds of encumbrances. This night, this one is not just deliverance. This one is God catching you finally for him. Lord, take over her whole life from head to toe. Take over everything you can take over in this lady's life. Cares, go. Cares, go. Cares, go. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to pray. <laughs> just leave her out because she's not recovering soon. This one is not just deliverance. God is taking, I have found my servant David. This is what is happening. When God finds a man, he doesn't leave you easily. He makes sure that you rise up with a hunger that nothing else. I trust God that this will happen to many people in this place tonight. Because I tell you, Pastor, a lot of people are in certain situations because they love God, but they have cares. So they, are, they, are, they easily become praise. It's not enough to, to be healed or to be delivered. Your heart must be with God for you to walk in sustainable victory. Many people like miracle service. They just run and come and take the miracle and then they run away. But let me tell you something. Your heart. Come, sister. Unto him come who sits on the throne. Bless. Let God find you today. Are you hearing me? To Jesus the Lamb Hold my hands. Father, find a vessel in this lady. Do with her what only you can do. Ignite a fire in her spirit. Even as you have revealed to me, let this lady have a, a passion that cannot be quantified. In the name of Jesus, every spiritual weakness leaves you right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lamb who was slain Hallelujah The Lord is healing my grain headache The Lord is healing my grain headache My grain headache Intense My grain headache Where's my neighbor? Is she here? She, she didn't come. Please come. Tonight the Lord is going to visit you. See, many of you don't know that there's something called the season of God's visitation. Precious, yeah. Precious. You are precious. Your real name, oh, the one precious. <laughs> Make sure it's the name your father gave you. Not the one you gave yourself this night. Say, I must be precious. God, you must visit me. Many people threaten me with text messages during the miracles. I say, see, God must visit me. <laughs> Hallelujah. The Lord is visiting you. Hold my hands. This demon of marital delay is going. You will go to a real deliverance, right? Come out! Come out of her! Shataka balata The fire of God is burning your whole body from head to toe. It's a foul spirit. Come out, 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 come out,
Prento Poto Kopete Rekete Le Kopusia. In this area, we are going to celebrate your wedding. It, I'm announcing it this night. In this area, we are going to celebrate your wedding. That foul devil. Come out of her. Come out of her. Come out of her. Sekete. Come out of her. Come out. Come out of her. Come out, you foul spirit. Lift up your heads, O ye gates. Be ye lifted. This is a snake. Look at look at what is happening. Look at what is happening. I see. Look at look at this. This is what is responsible. Come out. Come out of her in the name of Jesus. Zombe ketekelaya. Brata bata kata baladaba. Just leave her. It cannot stand. It's going. Now, foul devil, you will release her. There is no hiding. The power of God is against you. You will go and return no more. And as you are going, I call forth your husband, not a man. Your husband. Your husband. Precious. All of you. All of you are. No, no, no. I didn't ask my green to come out. But since you came out, may God visit you. You have an elder brother. Where is he? He's in Abuja. Doing what? He's no, he's doing nothing. He went for holidays. Which holiday? He went to Hosu. Tell him to come back. This is what happens to people. They they just believe that bread is in Abuja. Let me tell you. If some of you want to run, you want to fake this and run to Germany. Can I tell you something? The Bible says promotion comes neither from the east nor the west. Because some of you are already planning. You just believe. You say you are running. Where to say greener pastures? The Bible says he makes me lie down in the green pastures is the presence of God. Don't feel embarrassed. Okay? May the Lord visit you and visit your brother in the name of Jesus Christ. You will be a great teacher of the word. Huh? You will be a great teacher of the word. Something like light will hit your eyes right now. And God will give you the spirit of revelation. Thank you, Jesus Christ. Open his eyes. Open his eyes. You will be rich, oh. Because you have suffered, you will be rich. And look at me. I'm not just, this is not entertainment. I'm telling you the word of the Lord. Huh? Never forget the house of God. But you will be mightily blessed. How it will happen, we even make people think you went to diabolic, you went and did diabolic things. May the Lord bring this to pass. You will see it happen. Some of you don't know that God will use you more than you have planned. You just think you will just be passive in the house of God and not do anything. No way. God knows how to get you. He will bring you for miracle service quietly. While you are thinking fashion and business and this... God is thinking fashion plus ministry. It's not just fashion, oh my dear. And beauty makeup is, is, is a serious call. Your name is Precious. Where's your mother? Where? Do you believe God wants to visit your family? Yes. Tell your mother to forgive everybody that has done whatever. Does it make sense to you what I'm saying? Who offended her? It was one of our uncles. She said, Abba. To her, she said that he, she used to tell us as our children that, that he maltreated her. This thing, since when she was small when till was now, small. this is what is stopping her breakthrough. Did you discuss this with me? No. Let her forgive, please. For as long as you keep somebody down, part of you will still be down. Is that true? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ. 
all those who are called into the worship ministry please listen if you come out here i i don't mean you like singing or you have a passion no i i like singing i'm not calling to the worship ministry you get my point please don't be emotional about about it come and line up here quickly quickly god wants to visit people i don't know why worship ministry will be alive to see you if after this prayer worship ministry ah. please think about it oh see the worship ministry is not a hobby blessed is he If there's no space, just stand where you are because fire, there's going to be a restoration of the Davidic order of worship. Believe it. I'm going to stand. Listen, as I walk around this place, the power and is, is fire that will come. It will catch many of you in a mighty way. Lord Jesus, as I begin to take it, take it right now. Take it. Fall. Fall. Take it. Take it. Take the fire. 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 The Davidic order of worship. Take the fire. Take the fire. Take the fire. Take the fire. Sing like angels. Receive it. It's coming on you. Lift up your hands, all of you that came to the front. My God, let it fall right now. My God, let it fall right now. To those standing at the door, let it fall, let it fall, let it fall, let it fall, let it fall. Take it, take it, take it, take it. Take it, healing anointings. Don't Take it. Make sure you are receiving it. You will write songs. Many of you will hear songs in your spirit. New songs, psalms, hymns, spiritual songs, psalms, hymns, spiritual songs. Receive it. Psalms, hymns, spiritual songs, songs of power, songs of light, songs of grace. Sons of healing. Listen. Consecration is the key. Consecration is the key to a life of true worship. Consecration. Thank God for the music dimension, but consecration is the key to a genuine life you want to stand some of you are already looking for money if this is your ambition you will not get this davidic anointing it doesn't happen that way your heart must pant after god and after his kingdom you must stay in the place of training until he builds you oh let it fall Yes, Lord, let it fall. Let it fall. As it were in the days of Jehoshaphat. Let it fall. Let it fall. Let it fall. Dimensions. Lord, release it from the east side of the temple. Let there be a releasing. Songs of power. Songs of the spirit. Hallelujah. So that we will do mighty things for our God. 
Hallelujah. Please go back to your seat. Thank you, Jesus. Did you bring prayer requests? Please pass them quickly. Now, all those who are sick, inside and outside, please, I'd like you to come out quickly. While this is happening, be passing the prayer request. Please, let's save time. Do it quickly. Mighty things are happening in this place. Man, de 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 bakososo so so do 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 prato shubata zike te 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 preke te pele de bush. Please don't be in a rush this night, because what God wants to do, He has not finished. Zizi zizi mene ke te pele de bush. Please, you are sick. Come out, just ushers help and line them up, please, please. Quickly, quickly, this is a miracle service. As you come and stand, trust God for your miracle. Trust God for your healing, please. If you are doubting, just go back to your seat. Anybody who is, please play the instruments. Anybody, mic, music director, whoever. Those of you, those of you staying, make sure you are praying for them. As I lay my hands on you, I want to assure you. Please believe God for real miracles. Some of you as you are standing, because there is a healing river, as you are standing, you can't stand that majestic healing presence of the Holy Spirit. It's a majestic presence. As we worship in your presence, there is healing. The Holy Spirit, gentle touch. Help me, Pastor. Please help him with your mic. Is flowing. Jesus, Jesus. we, we believe. Make sure you pass Jesus, your prayer request. I tell you, there is a there healing is river. Healing in your there is a day. healing river. Hey, hey. Jesus, As we worship in your presence, there is healing. Hey, and I'm also the Holy Spirit, gentle touch is I pray for you, begin to check yourself. Jesus, we believe. Jesus, there is healing in your name. Almighty Father, Pastor William. Almighty Father, we lift our hands to you to receive the power. You would do. 
Let her go in the name of Jesus. Jesus, we believe. I believe in you right now. For there is healing. This is woman in the name of Jesus. As we worship, as we worship in your presence, there is healing. I see healing, 
one of the biggest miracles that will happen in this place tonight. Many of you don't know what a breakthrough is. The Bible says, and Abraham was old and stricken in age, and God had blessed him in all things. This is what we call breakthrough. Hallelujah. Please, if you have not submitted your request, let me tell you where we got the revelation of this. The Bible says, and they sent a threat letter to Hezekiah. Remember? And the Bible says Hezekiah took the letter and came and dropped it on the altar and showed God the threatenings. And when that happened, there was wisdom that was revealed and they strategized worshippers. And the Bible says that they began to fight themselves in the camp. You will see a lot of confusion as we begin to pray for this thing. I don't mean confusion here. Confusion in the camp of the enemy. Whatever request you brought in this place, I really want, many of you don't know what God is doing this night. God is setting people on fire. We have a few minutes remaining. But God will visit you. We want you to come back with evidences that God touched you. See, when you get results, it's a consolation to your Christian work. Are you listening to me? Those outside, look at some of you standing standing right across i see you god cannot allow you to go back the same way it's impossible you didn't come to meet an idol hallelujah rise up on your feet everybody it's a very prophetic moment right now as we pray i'd like to ask the ministers pastor williams pastor. So. please if you've not written your request drop it god is doing great things in this place as we begin to pray on this request. Hallelujah. Pray along with us. Prophesy. Stretch your hands and pray. Tell the Lord, this is my request, O Lord. This is my request. Father, locate people. Locate people, O God. Locate cases. 
there are there are difficult cases cases of barrenness deliverances for families lord this is an altar you have sanctified in one accord we pray just lay your hands across it as we release the virtue of perfection total breakthroughs academic breakthroughs make sure you are praying say lord my request in this is in this place locate it those online we are connecting with them also in the spirit those following us on all of our online channels Yes, Lord, we thank you. Release breakthroughs to families. We sanctify these requests. These Egyptians will never be seen in families and lives again. Change stories, oh God. Hallelujah. Omnipotent Father, Lord God of mercy and grace. The God who says a thing and accomplishes it in the life of his children. The I am that I am. The beginning and the end. The first and the last. Who is there like unto you? You are greater than the greatest. You are stronger than the strongest. You are mightier than the mightiest. You're the one who sits in the heavens and you made the earth your full stool. You are great. You are greatly to be praised. We thank you because of this opportunity that you have given unto us, oh God, to bring down our needs, our supplication, our requests unto your feet. You said in your word that you are able to do exceedingly and abundantly far above all we ever ask, think, or imagine according to the power that is at work within us. We thank you, oh God, because we know that every need that has been penned down, every request that has been written down, you have already seen it. You have already seen it. And because you have seen it, we thank you because this, this request are seen by the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And we see you doing great things in this place tonight. Thank you for the testimonies. Thank you for the testimonies that are coming out from this pen down written notes. We thank you for the testimonies coming out from this. In the name of Jesus, we bless you because we know that we'll come here next time to give you thanks of what you have done. Thank you, Lord, because every need, every need, every need here, they are met. Amen. We give you thanks. Thank you, we give you thanks. We give you thanks. We give you thanks. We give you thanks. Oh God, we give you thanks. Lord, we give you thanks. We give you praise. For we know that all things work together for our good. We give you thanks. We give you praise for by faith we know your grace. We see us through. 
Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. My God, as I pray, you gave me an anointing to bless, an anointing to release. Father, as many people as are in this place, inside and outside, they came here hungry. And Lord, as I speak on behalf of the government of heaven, let these words be so effectual. Let these words be fervent. Respond, O oh God. Every word I declare, let there be testimonies that will return. Every word that I'm about to declare to you, please, when I pray, I like you to shout amen with all your heart. Because I sense a very strong prophetic anointing coming upon me. I really want to speak from the depths of my heart. I don't just want you to believe it. I want you to return. The Bible says, and the 70 returned rejoicing. Hallelujah. I want to pray for families. Lift your hands. Let's start with families right now. Please, I'd like you to shout amen with all your heart. Hallelujah. Every family represented in this place, every family, any curse, any ordinance of darkness, every yoke of bondage afflicting any family, I set you free now in the name of Jesus. I set families free now in the name of Jesus. I set families free now in the name of Jesus. I set families free now in the name of Jesus. Father, mother, brothers, sisters, be free. 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 Anyone here, whether you or your family members, looking for a job in the mighty name that is above all names, between today and the next 40 days, I place a demand upon the heavens. Receive miracle jobs. Receive miracle job. Receive miracle job for you, for your loved ones. probation you are trusting the hand whatever it is you're doing your project things are difficult 
whatever academic issue tonight in the name of the Lord God of Israel the one who does wonders in this place I declare step into a season of academic victory step into a season of academic victory I release you from any kind of bondage I release you any kind of academic bondage be free be free amen. be free amen hallelujah all those who are due for marriage whether you or your love your loved ones see let me tell you in this place once you are of marriageable age you must marry are you hearing me are you listening to me what did I say right. hallelujah somebody married that's why you are here you must marry praise God are you listening to me right now I speak as a servant of the living God I've prayed about it but I will pray again I pray some of you, you are a lady, you are pretty. But no man can come around. This is a curse. Tonight I pray that your wives and your husbands, those of you who are who have concubines and etc. When I make the altar call, run out here. Because this is what will stop you. You are entitled to only one wife. Say Amen. You are entitled to only one husband. Say amen. amen. The spirit of double dating dies here tonight. Leave another sister's husband to locate her husband. Leave another brother's wife to locate him. But I pray in the name of Jesus, before the end of this year, may there be fearful or inspiring miracle marriage. Take it, take it. God told before December 31st, 2013, come back with testimonies for yourself, for your loved ones. We supply the resources, we supply the grace. disease in this place HIV whatever it is hallelujah infections all kinds of satanic names I declare right now we curse it from the root in the name of Jesus anyone there whose genotype is SS or AS in the name that is above all names be changed be changed to AA I change it in the name of the Lord receive it receive a change of genotype you will come back with testimonies believe it, receive it everything he made he made it beautiful any kind of demonic dreams and oppressions of darkness some of you see people sleep with you some of you see all kinds of demonic things molestations of darkness i pray right now the last time you had that dream or that experience let it be the last time forever in your life i said let it be the last time forever let it be the last time forever satan i curse you I cause every foul Amen, amen, amen. All those who are students and are in final year, I declare, those who need the mercy of God for their graduation, I pray right now, let policies be changed. Let something happen in your faculty that has never happened. We release you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. 
I want to prophesy restoration. Whatever it is that you have lost, whether as a result of your past or mistakes, opportunities, graces, I pray that the God who regulates times and seasons, let that season come back to your life. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Every lecturer in this place or those who your parents are lecturers stand for them, I want to speak. There are lecturers whose promotions are overdue. Is that true? Is that true? In the name that is above all names this night, we command. Even offices that are not available, we create it for them this night. In the name of Jesus. The Bible says, and the king sent for Joseph and they brought him out of his dungeon. The king sent for Joseph. Tonight, I connect you with supernatural destiny helpers that will take you from where you are to the next level. I connect you. I call for the helpers of your destiny. Financial helpers. Marital helpers. Career helpers. Spiritual helpers. Receive their ministry in your life in the name of Jesus. I pray any project anyone is doing here whether you or your whether building project whatever it is for you and for your families you are building a three bedroom flat that's taking over 10 years this is a curse i pray right now in the name of jesus let there be supernatural supplies the beds that brought food for the prophet i command may they locate your family Open up the heavens over your family in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. One of the things God is doing in this season is preparing people for dimensions of prosperity that will scare people. Hallelujah. God is seriously looking for men who he will trust. These men will not just get well, they will be trained. The first thing you need is the staying grace. The school is not easy, let me tell you the truth. But happy are you when you pass through it because you will command wealth that will make you afraid. I pray for you. Every curse of poverty and lack there are some of you who are kingdom financiers the power of god will come upon you kingdom financiers kingdom financiers kingdom financiers kingdom financiers now i pray for everyone this cause of poverty that is upon many lives and families that has closed the heaven over many people in the name of the Lord Jesus this night by the sure mercies of the God of David I command your heavens to be open I command your financial heavens be open be open be open be open be open be open That bring prosperity favor and wisdom hallelujah money comes through favor it is preserved through wisdom the bible says through wisdom is a house built and by understanding it is established through knowledge the rooms are filled with every treasurable thing i pray let your hands receive wealth that only god can give inexplainable but undeniable receive it in the name of Jesus let me tell you brothers it is not by power 
when it comes to prosperity it is not by might it's by the spirit of God hallelujah two more things and we're up I want to pray for favor this is one of the things we enjoy in abundance hallelujah I cannot tell you how the favor of God works no man can explain it but I know it works I know it works I am a testament if you believe I want you to believe many of you you, you are used to suffering you don't know what the favor of God can do some of our family members what you need is the favor of God the Bible says in Isaiah 44 verse 3 it said they got not into their land they got not the land by their possessions neither did their arms save them but because you had you showed favor towards them please believe one encounter of favor I tell you it can it can it can keep you in a position for a lifetime believe it there is something called divine favor what you see today is the evidence we have never paid a dime for this venue the last miracle service I still don't know who paid for the venue this is the favor of God I want you to believe it if you want to work for everything in your life get set to die Hallelujah. Lift your hands. Let me pray for you. Favor. For many of you to come on you. This is what you need. I'm telling you. This is what you need. Families. What you need is favor. Not stories. My God. My God. I pray in the name of Jesus. The favor that is upon Koinonia. I take it and I release it to your life. Take it now. Take it now. Take it now. Take it now. I activate favor. Favor. Favor with God. Favor with man. Favor. Receive it. Favor. Koinonia is called the place of intimacy and partnership with the Holy Spirit hallelujah you cannot come here tonight and not be on fire for God you cannot be here tonight and not be on fire for the things of the Spirit hallelujah hallelujah I want to release grace that your spiritual life will stand strong and solid many of you your prayer altars are dead it's not because you don't love God hallelujah many of you one leg in one leg out last year you were on fire this year hallelujah many of our mothers fathers people at homes our prayer life our word life we're looking for things that only the word of God can give us but Jesus said to Martha he said one thing is needful one thing one thing I want to pray for you hallelujah alongside with this I want to pray for the distribution of the gifts of the Spirit hallelujah Paul said I long to come to you that I may impart upon you some spiritual gift to the end that ye may be established a powerless Christianity and I'm not talking of just falling out Christianity with results Christianity with proofs we have too many talkatives in the body of Christ. Inside or outside. Some of you have been crying and said, Lord, can't my life not have proofs? Can't the sick be healed through my hands too? Can I not bless people and it will work for them? Hallelujah. Lift your hands. I want to pray for you. Hallelujah. I consider it to be an all-important impartation. Please get ready because it will come upon you. Different kinds of gifts of the spirit. Stirrings of the spirit. At the count of three. I want you to shout Jesus. 
at the shout of that name some of you will will be set on fire literally so that your spiritual life will be hot so that God will use you and do wonders are you ready shout it with all your heart at the count of three one two three take it God of knowledge take it gifts of wisdom take it take it take it take it Receive it. I set your prayer life on fire. I set your prayer life on fire. Let the spirit of revelation fall. Spirit of revelation. The teaching anointing. Leadership anointing. Take it. Take it. Take it. Leadership anointing. Jesus. Leadership anointing. Jesus. Oh, Rest to fast. Jesus. Rest to pray. Jesus. Rest to say no. To sin. Rest to say no. To destructive Jesus. habits. Result that we enjoy in this house may it be part of your life from today in the name of Jesus hallelujah I release entrepreneurial ideas there is a spirit listen I take from the abundance of grace that God has given me entrepreneurial ideas that will raise financial giants. Lift your hands, everybody. In the mighty name of Jesus, take it, take it, take it, take it. Jesus. Take it, Jesus. Hallelujah. May your life be a fruitful life. May your life be a fruitful life. Amen. May your life be a fruitful life. Amen. May God bring results to your life. To be a consolation to your Christian work. Any life that has not been experiencing results that you have never testified, may this be your month. Any life that has not been experiencing results, may this be your month. Do you believe this? Hallelujah. I want to give you an opportunity inside and outside. If you've never given your heart to the Lord, please keep standing everybody. You've never made a decision for the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. You've never made a decision for the Lord Jesus Christ. Hear me. Inside and outside, you are hearing my voice right now. You have seen the works of the Lord. It's time for you to get into a real relationship with God. Or for some of you, you have given your heart to the Lord. Hallelujah. But you found yourself derailing. Inside and outside, the Lord is speaking to you. Mother, father, whoever. I want you to leave your seat and come out here right now. I want to lead you and reconnect you back to the King of Kings. The lover of your life. Inside and outside. Right now, leave your seat and come. Koinonia, appreciate them as they come. Everybody. Thank you. Thank you. They are coming. God bless you. Don't be ashamed. Don't be afraid. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Our mother is coming. Celebrate them, Koinonia. Outside. Don't let the devil stop you. 
mother, father, whoever, yes, stand to surrender. surrender. Appreciate them. It doesn't matter what your past is, God can give you a new beginning. Go and allow the person you came with to stop you. This is the greatest miracle. Another Jesus. Keep clapping. Keep clapping. They are still coming. The Holy Ghost is convicting them inside and outside. Thank you, Jesus. We will connect you to the maker of your life. I surrender more. Thank you, Jesus. On to be my blessed Savior. God bless you, brother. And I surrender. God bless you. Hallelujah. I want to celebrate you for your bold decision for Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. People close their eyes when they are about to get born again as if what they are doing is wrong. This is the greatest miracle. Hallelujah. And I want you to know that we celebrate you. Some of you are giving your heart to Jesus for the first time. Others have given your heart to the Lord, but you found yourself derailing. I want to pray for you. The Lord loves you and he wants to make meaning out of your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lift your hands, all of you in front. I like you to say after me and mean it from the depths of your heart. Say after me, Lord Jesus, I love you. And I thank you for dying for my sins. This night, I believe that Jesus is Savior and Lord. And I accept him. My name is in the book of life. I declare that I'm saved. The Holy Spirit is in me. Eternal life is mine. From today, I denounce sin and Satan and every past life and I receive grace to live the victorious Christian life. My sins are washed away. It's a new beginning for me. Amen. Let me pray for you. Father, thank you. You brought these ones by your spirit. You brought them to bless. You brought them to reconnect them to the maker of their lives. My God, I pray that their salvation will last. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I pray that you do mighty things through their lives. I pray that many destinies will be blessed. The reason and the purpose for which they came to the earth. Let it be discovered and maximized. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I pray that every encumbrance, everything that keeps you in the path that is not of God. You are free for me today. There is grace for you. You will enjoy a victorious fellowship with the Holy Spirit. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We celebrate you. Please, I'd like you to follow the ushers. They'll have your details and we'll send you a text and get across to you. Pastor Jakes is not around, but we'll send, we'll make arrangements and I'll be there by God's grace to see you. God bless you. Please, tomorrow, together with them, all those who have not received the baptism of the Holy Spirit with evidence of speaking in tongues, six on the dot, please be at the chapel. I will be there to minister to you. Hallelujah. Six on the dot, be at the chapel. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Please rise up. We are closing. Thank you for waiting this long. All those who are worshipping with us for the first time, inside and outside, we love you and we believe God brought you here to bless you. I'd like you to jump on your feet and rush out here quickly. Celebrate them, Koinonia. If this is your first time, please, inside and outside, you are special. We have a prayer for you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. All those who invited them, I pray that every good thing will come into your life in the name of Jesus. God bless you. God bless you. Keep clapping. They are still coming. Thank you. Thank you, sirs. Thank you, Mark. Thank you. Thank you. Keep clapping until they come. They are special to us. They are the evidence that God is at work in this place. Thank you, Jesus. Hello. Scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. 
I say, is my son. Attend to my sins. Incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed. And then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos. We have loads of content that is going to make you blessed. That is going to set you on course. That is going to set you ablaze. And don't forget to like for us. Thank you.